YouTube. So today I'm doing a video on something I've had a lot of experience with um, and I think other people need to be aware. I mean you might already be aware but if um, you've got an eating disorder or you're not in a very good place with your eating it's very easy to fall into the trap. So what I'm going to be talking about today is how there is such a thing as too much veg and there is such a thing, sorry my hair is in my fucking head, as too much fruit and I'm also going to be talking about how it's very dangerous to have a low carb no carb diet so where to begin um let's start off with the there is such a thing as too much veg so veg is very good for you vegetables you know are you know one of your five a day or seven a day or whatever it is the media so it is now they're very good for you and they have lots of benefits but if your main constitute of food is purely veg it's very dangerous for your gut because veg is quite hard to digest not only if you have IBS or other issues which most people with an eating disorder don't have the best digestion in the world um, it's one of the hardest things to digest, especially raw, and if you're having just veg, um, you can get something called gut rot, which is where your gut, you'll get a blockage, which is as unpleasant as it sounds, and parts of your bowel will die off. So I've experienced this, this is how I know that you can have too much veg because in one of my relapses I literally just ate vegetables not even fruit I was terrified of fruit I was terrified of anything that wasn't a vegetable so I literally just ate vegetables and it gave me gut rot it, I was in hospital with a blockage and parts of my small intestine were dying off because my body couldn't process the food it just couldn't do it because it was so much veg and veg is predominantly in insoluble fiber which doesn't get digested by your body so it was just building up and up and up and up and up and up and up in my gut until it just completely blocked completely and it's very dangerous and it can actually, luckily, thank, thank the Lord, luckily they managed to help me and they fixed it. But if it goes on for a long period of time, it's very dangerous and you can end up with a colostomy bag, which is a bag attached to your stomach because your bowel just won't work anymore. My mum unfortunately has a colostomy due to other problems, but this is why she can't have barely any veg now so yeah veg is good for you but don't overdo it like honestly two portions of veg with your meal is enough or if you've got a high veg meal maybe have a more less veggy lunch especially if you're a vegan because I'm a vegan so I know lots of vegans, probably a hell of a lot of veg, a hell of a lot of fruit, but the important thing that I'm going to move on to now is if you are going to be eating a lot of veg and a lot of fruit, you need carb in your diet as well, because fruit and veg is made from ferments, fermentable oleoglycerides, I might have said that wrong, which need carbohydrate to help them digest so 
for example something I fell into a trap of is all this alternative pasta so we have spiralized courgette or spiralized carrot or spiralized pasta you get the idea you can basically spiralize any vegetable um, but if you're gonna have that you really need to have pasta with it as well because it's just gonna screw up your gut majorly um, so that's something I've learned and unfortunately the issue is I don't actually like the taste of many carbohydrates so I'm not a fan of bread I make my own bread which I like but store-bought gluten-free bread I do not like um, I'm not really a fan of white rice I'm going to try brown rice tonight for the first time and hopefully I like it. I like rice noodles, so that's something I've found that I do like. Um, but now, I, d I still have my courgette and I still have my cauliflower rice, but I have normal rice as well. So I have my cauliflower rice as, sorry, oh, that was loud, have my cauliflower rice as part of my veg portions because I like it. So... I still have it, I just have carb with it as well. And the other thing about a very low carb diet is it messes with the way your body and your muscles work. Now, I actually developed protein depletion, which wasn't necessarily from, it wasn't purely from not enough protein, it was because I didn't have any carbohydrate in my diet so my muscles were like wasting away because my body couldn't take energy from carbohydrates so it was taking the energy from my muscles because if anything protein was one thing I always had enough of because lots of my safe foods so to speak were high in protein and because I used to be a dancer I constantly go on about protein and protein is important for building muscles and it's important for everything really but again not too much it's all about not too much but anyway this video isn't on protein um so yeah i actually developed protein depletion because i wasn't having enough carbohydrates you can also develop something called hypoglycemia which I've had as well and that was due to not having enough carbohydrate in my diet so basically what I'm saying is all these low carb fads and diets are very dangerous they it annoys me that on the media because you see it on Pinterest or you see it on Google and you're like oh loads of people do it so it must be okay but especially if you've had an eating disorder you've got an eating disorder if you've got digestion issues or anything like that you most certainly should not be on a low carb no carb diet it's extremely dangerous and that is the message I want you to take away from this video anyway where else is it? fruit so I love fruit don't get me wrong oh my god fruit is like life I absolutely adore fruit but again there's such a thing as too much fruit for your body so it's not so much too much oh my god too much as in you've eaten too much like your eating disorder will read that what i mean is fruit is a fermentable fructose so it's extremely difficult to digest in its raw form so we're talking apples um pears anything raw is extremely difficult for your body to digest now if you stew them so cook them or what else can you do it? Like bananas are a good fruit for your body. They help with your digestion, but you should have no more than three bananas a day, ideally. But it's up to you, you know. Um, but fruit, if you have IBS or digestion issues, or and as I'm saying, I'm not saying everyone. I'm just putting a warning out there because some people might be able to eat. I don't know, two punnets of blueberries and stuff and be absolutely fine. But the majority of people 
would get an absolutely raging stomach ache and I'm sort of explaining why that is. Fruit also, if you eat too much fruit, it can cause bloating which again is not fun for anyone and can feed negatively into your body image. So I love fruit, I absolutely love it, but because I have IBD and IBS, they're not sure which form I have yet but I'll go into that on in another video, um, I shouldn't really have more than three portions of fruit a day and sometimes it's quite difficult because we have a lot of fruit in and I'm like, oh, fruit. But I, I know when I've had too much fruit, I suffer really badly. I get so bloated, I'm in agony. It's, it's really annoying. But equally, it's your body's way of telling you something's not right. So yes, fruit and veg are healthy, they're extremely healthy, but too much of them is painful and is a bad thing. And again, if you're a vegan, you may find that you're living the raw life and having raw vegetables and raw fruit all the time, which you, you might not have any stomach problems for it. You might be completely fine, but I'm telling you, it's still not healthy for your body. Your body needs a certain amount of fruit, a certain amount of veg, a certain amount of carbohydrates, a certain amount of protein, and a certain amount of fat. Yeah, the last one I'm still getting to grips with myself, but I know deep down, yeah, it's important. Um, so that's basically my experience with cutting out carbs from my diet and how it messed up my body completely. And I just don't think people should advocate low carb, no carb diets, they just shouldn't. Even for people who want to lose weight, like, I'm hoping no one watching this channel thinks, oh my god, I need to lose weight because you're all beautiful and you don't need to. But like, even like, for example, my mum who's trying to lose weight at the moment, she's not cut carbs out of her diet because she'd be in a worse off state, really. Um, so just don't, they feed your brain and their glucose and your body needs glucose. I think the only reason you'd have to watch carbs is if you're diabetic. I know diabetics have to watch their carbs, though my dad literally pays no attention whatsoever to his diabetes. Um, other than that, just like have pasta, have rice, have bread if you like it, have and I know everything's a carb, like, people have said to me, or I've used the excuse when people have been like, you can't just have vegetables, like, have some noodles with it, you know? I'm like, yeah, well, everything's a carb, but it's different types of carbohydrate. As I said, fruit and veg are fermentable oleoglycerides, and it, they're not the same as rice or pasta in their genetic makeup so they don't digest the same and they don't give your body the same things basically and unless you want to end up with a really screwed up gut you need to just everything just don't be excessive on anything like if like m me you have calories to make up or something don't make it up by having like a bowl of carrots or I don't know a punnet of blueberries because yes it will make the calories up but it will give you such a bad stomach ache and like I've had to change the way I think about fruit and veg because I absolutely adore it and I love raw carrot like oh my gosh raw carrot is amazing but I know that carrots are much easier to digest when it's cooked. Sad truth. Especially when you're in recovery from anorexia or an eating disorder, your body is going to be struggling to process all this new 
food and it's going to be a bit like oh okay i'm getting fed brilliant but fruit and veg are the last things your body learns to digest again so when you first start recovery there shouldn't be a high proportion of your diet like in units you don't get loads of fruit and veg and I've learned that is why because it's very difficult to digest and when you do have it it's microwaved it's cooked it's stewed you know fresh fruit salad occasionally which is like two pieces of apple and a grape and a bit of melon if you're lucky like nothing like a whole melon like people have like a whole melon for breakfast and things like it's just it's disordered in its own way and when you're just starting out recovery and you might be in a unit so you won't be in control of what you're eating but you need to focus on easy to digest food so we're talking mashed potatoes white rice particularly like white rice but white rice is easier to digest than brown rice because it doesn't have the wheat germ around it and it has less fiber in and I mean I could do a whole other video on fiber but I don't want to bore you with that um, but yeah the husk and the germ is the bit that's really difficult to digest which is what brown rice has white rice doesn't so white rice is easier to digest so white rice mashed potatoes stewed plum stewed fruit um really cooked vegetables so like steamed or microwaved or i mean you can boil them if you want but it sort of takes all the nutrition out of them um cereals cereals really easy to digest it's really gentle on the tummy um if you want i can do a whole other video on food that's easy to digest um yogurt like milk if you're a vegan, like out milky things are good to start off with when you're reintroducing food. Um, what else? Hmm. Yeah, milky drinks, mashed potato, white rice. I've said all that. I'm just repeating myself now, but my brain's gone blank. Yeah. So I'll do another video on that if you want, if people want me to, and I'll plan it a bit better. But yeah, just make sure if you're having fruit and veg, and don't overdo it. Don't don't make ninety percent or ninety nine percent of your diet predominantly fruit and veg because it's not good for your gut and even if you haven't been diagnosed with a gut problem, as I've said, when you're in recovery from an eating disorder or you have an eating disorder, your digestion is not going to be great. And yeah, that's one of the very many downsides of having anorexia or bulimia, or I don't actually know anything about bulimia, but I have friends who have it and their digestion, yeah. Like, so your digestion is not gonna be great. So you have to be gentle to your tummy. You have to be kind to your stomach. And you have to give it a bit of an easy ride for a bit. Just not be like, eat all this undigestible food. Just ease it back into life <laughs> and it will be your friend. And if you do suffer with bloating, I mean, I find ginger tea really helpful. Um, I don't find peppermint tea that helpful for bloating, actually. I find ginger tea much more helpful because it helps with the nausea as well that often comes with bloating. Um, hot water bottles are good. Um, gentle stretches. There's some yoga poses that are really good for bloating, but obviously if you're not able to do yoga at the moment, if you're not allowed to, then you've just got to drink the ginger tea. Ginger and lemon's really good for bloating as well. Um, hot water bottles. Just be kind to yourself. Put a movie on. Just don't beat yourself up that you're bloated because everyone in recovery is probably going through the same thing because you, our bodies have to learn to trust us again and they have to learn to digest food again and I mean if you've got IBS as well because I have IBS as well it's going to be hard 
because you already have digestion issues so you just have to go with your body and trust it knows what it's doing and um, peppermint what's it called peptac is really good for nausea and bloating as well I don't know what it's um, commercial name is like to buy it from a shop but that's really good and my inbox is always open and yeah it's just about learning how to eat again really and you have to get rid of everything you think you know like I thought for so long like I was just like I can't even explain it. I was just like, yeah, I don't need rice, you know, I'll be fine without it, I'll be fine without pasta, you know, like, you don't need it. You can eat fruit and veg and I'll be fine. No, no, you won't. <laughs> you won't be fine at all because, yeah, there's protein in cauliflower, but it's a lot of protein, like, it's good for protein, but it's it's not got the same things in it rice has. So, yeah, just be careful, look after yourselves, and this is speaking from someone who's experienced having a just fruit and veg diet, and experienced a low carb diet, and experienced all the bad things that come with too much fruit and too much veg, and no carbs in your life. So, carbs aren't evil. Don't listen to the media, because frankly, I think about 200 years ago they said eggs were bad for you and now eggs are good for you again and then next week they'll probably be bad for you again so you know they just like having a new thing to shame and be like no this is bad so listen to your body not the news in fact never watch the news the news is the most depressing thing in the world I don't watch the news it just puts me on a downer like just they never report happy things, you know? It's never like, oh, a baby giraffe has been born somewhere. It's always like 500 people have died in a fire. Like, fabulous, I wanna watch that. I don't. Anyway, I'm waffling now and making absolutely no sense. So I'm done and yeah, see you soon, bye.